everyone. In today's video, we're going to go over the Booking Koala for Providers app, which includes the provider dashboard. The provider dashboard is where the providers can view all of their bookings. So um, you have your weekly view, you have a calendar view, you have a list view, uh, whichever way is easiest for you to view your bookings. Um, for all bookings, there's a view detail button. So when you click view details, you can see all of the details including the location of the booking, um, whatever your a merchant has allowed you to see in terms of information and details. And then of course, there's going to be an on the way button to start tracking when you've started to travel. So when you click on the way, that's going to indicate um, that you're now on the way to this actual booking and it will start tracking. Another helpful feature that you'll see inside your bookings is the late arrival message button. Uh, this allows you to send a message to uh, your customer, um, letting them know that you're running late, but that you should be arriving shortly. Um, there's a default message in here that's been created by your merchant, but you can go and edit it as needed. So if you are expecting to be there in 20 minutes instead of 30 minutes, you can easily change something like that. And then once you click send, um, you can view the sent messages here and view exactly timestamped when the message was sent out. Um, once you've actually arrived at the actual booking, then you can click the clock in button here. And when you want to clock in, you just click yes. And then now your time will start tracking. Um, if you need to take a break, you can click the lunch break button and that's going to just t stop tracking your job time, indicate that you're on a break. And whenever you're ready to resume the job, you can just click the resume button and it will resume tracking again. Now, once you're finished, you can actually click the clock out button. And once you click clock out, um, you may have an option to add mileage, travel time, and adjust your time reported. This will depend on the merchant that you're working with. Um, they may or may not allow you to submit adjustments to your time just in case your clock and clock out times were not accurate. Um, if you are allowed to, then you can just click the update button here. And just like that, everything will be up to date. Now you can also look at upcoming jobs from the calendar too and view details there. Um, as you can see, um, in this particular profile, the provider is allowed to see um, the amount of money they're making. Uh, this is also part of a team for them, uh, this particular job. If they want to view jobs that belong to specific teams, they can just click the icon down here and then click and then view their calendar for specifically that team. Like in this case, this is a team job here. And when we go in, we can see more details about the job. This is for a pet grooming industry job. And we can see it has a checklist associated with it. Um, so depending on your merchant, you might have checklists created. Um, these will just help you guide it through the job. So in this particular case, the grooming checklist has sections for bathing, um, shampoo and conditioning, brushing, do matting, nail trimming, etc. There's also a note section. So if the provider would like to leave some notes or send notes to the merchant, they can add notes to this particular job. And then there's a media section too. So media can be uploaded um, like pictures, videos, etc. All of the file types are listed above. And then once they're complete, there's a complete button and that will just uh, show that the checklist has been completed. Um, in this case, the checklist hasn't been completed yet. So it's showing us that these two particular items haven't been done yet. You'll also be able to view jobs on a map by allowing location permissions for your phone. So to do that, just click the view job on map button when you first open the app and 
a pop-up will appear and will show you the directions that you need to go. Now, if you work for more than one company that uses Booking Koala, there's gonna be a switch company button here. And this will allow you to switch between your companies to view jobs for different companies. So in this case, we can switch to our other merchant, enter our password. And then here we can view the job for today. And just switch back. All you have to do is click switch merchant again. Enter the password and sign back in. And you'll be able to see your jobs again. Another feature that your merchant may have enabled for your app is the provider chat feature. This allows you to send messages back and forth with um, people on your teams, uh, with your merchant, etc. So um, the merchants can send messages directly to you. You can see when they're online. They can see when you're online or it's logged into your app. Um, and this helps just with general communication. Instead of having to text back and forth, um, everything could just be right in the app. Now, the top right corner, you'll see notifications. So these will be notifications for new bookings. You can see that there's been an invitation for a booking here. And it's pretty seamless to navigate through the dashboard to find bookings. Um, there's also a list view, which will show today's bookings. Then you have an upcoming bookings section, which will just show all of your bookings in sequential order, and then a job history. You can also sort if you belong to a team, bookings for just that particular team. So here we have this individuals on several different teams. So we can sort and look at bookings where they're part of that particular team. Next, we have the unassigned bookings folder, um, which may or may not be um, allowed depending on your company's preference. Um, basically, how it works is that bookings that are unassigned, they do not have anyone who's currently able to work them, are placed into this area here. And then you can click the grab job button and the job will be assigned to you. So if you're allowed access to this page, then you can view jobs on a calendar or in a list form, just like the other section. The manage availability section has a couple of different ways of managing the schedule for a provider. So um, if you're putting in your availability, you can put it in through a calendar list view or the old view, which is, um, the original view that we've created when adjusting provider availability. So in the calendar view, all you need to do is click on a date and then there's an add shift button. So the shift can be added if you'd like to add a shift. If a shift is existing, there's an X button so you can delete the shift if you'd like. Um, it's also optional to put a reason. And then you'll see any bookings assigned to you for that particular date that you're requesting to change your availability for. All right, and so the way it works for this particular company. Um, the availability is just updated automatically once it's submitted. Um, there are companies that might have a uh, request style um, submission where the provider must go in and you'll have to submit a request for time off as opposed to just changing it yourself. Um, 
So this will depend ultimately on the settings of the store that you work for. You might also have spot availability option here, which will show how many bookings you can take per each spot. Um, again, some companies might have this, some might not. But if you do have the ability to edit your own spots, then you can go in and change how many bookings you can take per spot. Um, this might be applicable if you're like a dog walker, for example, and you can take multiple dogs per spot. Then you can update it just by clicking the Save button. And now the booking spots will be updated. If you want to change your availability, there's a couple of different options. Of course, there's changing default availability, so that's going to be your recurring regular availability. Um, specific day is what we did in the calendar, um, and requesting time off is also what we did in the calendar too. So specific date um, can be um, going into a specific date and adding a shift, um, or taking a shift away. Requesting time off would be to request a period off in this uh, works by you selecting your dates that you're not going to be able to work. Putting in a reason, which may or may not be optional depending on the company you work for. Again, you'll be able to see all of the customers that will be impacted. And when you click apply, that will remove the working hours or submit the working time off request. Next we have the settings section. Um, some of you may be able to edit your settings. Um, so your industry settings, these are the types of um, industries you can work for. So if your company has multiple industries, you can decide if you take jobs in all of these industries or if you just take jobs in a couple of these industries. So you can easily toggle on or off the industry. And then the forms are the different types of jobs. Um, so you can contact your company uh, manager and they'll be able to help you ex explain if there's more than one form available per industry, which forms you'll be able to work, if you'll work all of the forms or if you'll just work certain types of forms. Essentially forms are just going to be the different styles of pricing. Um, one form might be hourly, Another form might be flat rates, um, so um, you can basically decide which forms you're going to be able to accept work for. For form settings, if you have permission to do this, this allows you to actually go in for each form and decide um, what types of appointments you're going to be able to take. Um, so, for example, if you didn't want one-time appointments, you could uncheck the the checkbox next to one time to remove it and that means you only get recurring customers. Um, you can go in, you can also decide if you want to be combined with other people into pairs. Um, so if you want to work with other people for jobs you can click yes otherwise if you select no that means you just work as an individual or in your pre-existing teams. And then here we can see in this particular option, um, this provider has opted to not take jobs with certain types of variables here. So we'll just select those now and then click the Save button. And the reason for updating is that we can take these jobs. So if there are multiple industries and multiple forms, you can go through again, and this is all customizable for each industry and form. You can also make really quick changes using this quick add button here. Quick add allows you to go through for turning on um, multiple appointments, all in one go, um, 
selecting which frequencies, if you like being able for pairing, service categories. Um, basically, it takes all of the variables from all the forms, puts them on one page, and then allows you to go through and quickly make changes. Under the profile section, this is where your basic information is going to be located. Uh, you can reset your password here. If you click edit profile, you can change your information, your email address, phone number, um, your address, etc. Also, if you have a payment processor that you'd like to connect, um, you can connect it here. As you can see here, the payment processor has been connected with Stripe. So that means that this particular provider gets their payments via Stripe from their company. Um, companies can have different types of payment processors. So your company's payment processor could also be Square um, or it could be PayPal. So um, check with your company to see how you'd like to proceed with payment pr processor if you're not sure. My Drive section, um, you may have this section here which allows you to upload documents. Also, it allows your company to upload documents for you to view, um, and you can download them as well. And then the payment section, this is where you can see all of your payments. So each time you get paid, you'll have a little breakdown of your payment, including the pay date, the total amount, the payment type, if it was paid in cash check, um, which just means it was paid outside of Booking Koala, or if it was paid through Booking Koala, like via Stripe in this case. Um, and you can see all of the completed bookings, including the amount of money per booking, as well as the total breakdown at the very bottom per paycheck. Now, if you've received any reviews from customers, then all of those reviews will be found in the review section. So you can go in and look at each review and see exactly what the customer wrote, um, what they left out of star ratings, um, and then the date and time, of course, of the review and the service. And then the very last section here is the help center. So if you have questions about something, for example, if you are connecting your account to Stripe and you want to set up um, your account to receive Stripe payments, then we have an article for you on how to do something like that. So you can just search using a keyword like Stripe and we will pull up all the different documents that we have available to help you. At the very bottom, um, if this is available for your company, you might be able to switch your app into different languages. Um, so uh, this is a feature that premium accounts have um, for our companies. So uh, take a look out for it. If you speak another language, you might have an app available in the language for you. And that is essentially the provider dashboard. So if you have any questions on how to use the provider dashboard or access something, please feel free to contact us. Our email address is support at bookingkoala.com. Thank you so much for watching.